Hey, good evening, everyone. This is another Tuesday evening. Uh, I come to present uh, some information that may be of help to us. If you're listening, it might be good if you have something to write with, just to take some notes, uh, so you can review your notes after our session this evening, or um, you can review the video again. So I'm just going to wait. My uh, sound engineer is not uh, home at the moment, so she may not be around, but I'll wait for somebody just to say, yeah, I'm on it. I can hear you loud and clear. And oh, hey, hey, listen, brilliant. She's on it. She's on it. She's in another part of the country at the moment, but she's absolutely on it. So uh, it looks like I might have to uh, give her an increase. Hey, good evening, Sonia. Listen, I'm good to go. Um, so just welcome to everyone. Um, I'm hearing more and more individuals saying to me, I listen to you, you know, uh, but they don't make the comments. Brilliant. I've been looking at some of the, in fact, the first time I've looked at some of the analyticals and, um, uh, analysis or the, um, where people are listening is unbelievable but anyway you know as long as it's helping people that's really great and so yeah good to go it's seven o'clock and let's make a good start so looking at taking time to pause we've been looking at for the last couple of weeks um thank you uh, youtuber um we've been looking at the last couple of weeks so today we're going to look at it a bit more um so really pausing it's really really important and certainly as i've been talking to individuals and they and who've been watching uh, the videos uh, the live broadcast and they're saying how much they need to pause as well take time out uh, a friend of mine has just taken two weeks off work on the sick uh, she just couldn't cope with them more and that also is a kind of pause and if you get to that place i would say that you don't try not to get to that uh, place if you do get to that place off to the doctors uh, doctors are fully aware of the levels of stress that people are under and um, the doctor said you need plenty of rest and for some of you, it may be going on long walks so you can think, you can just get away from um, the hustle and bustle and the tension of work and that, that working can be, um, the rest can be really important from work. So whole thing about pausing. And if you're listening, before you click off, they have some good, good information. If you're a manager or a leader, work for an organization, there's some information here that can be really, really helpful for you this evening. So taking a pause is take a breath. Hold on a minute, grab hold of the reins, stop, um, step back a bit. Any word you can think of, the whole thing around pausing. And the reason why I started it was a friend of mine, um, a social worker, somebody I'm, I am um, really, really close to and I think the world of and um, having a lot of um, having to juggle quite a lot of things, three or four things, but very, very stressful. And one of the things she's had to do is she said she's had to take time to pause to look at her diet, her anti-inflammatory diet, because she's got one or two health issues that have kind of flared up since all the pressure. So this whole thing about pausing was really important. So my name is Delroy Hall. I'm a trained psychotherapist, teacher and lecturer. Uh, I've got my own website that you can see there. I've been a counsellor for over 30 years and a teacher and lecturer for the same amount of time. I think 33 years, actually, to be uh, exact. I, yeah, no, I don't look old enough, I know. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and these, so what I'm presenting this evening and have done for the last three years is no substitute to make an appointment to go and see your doctor or making a proper appointment to see a counsellor, psychologist, a psychotherapist to work through the issues. These are just some insights to help you along the way. So uh, the benefits of, in fact, I'm going to share something later on, a uh, bonus for um, uh, for next month. So I want us to have our ears pricked for that one, but I'll be announcing it each week. So benefits of pausing increases focus. If we take time out, we can really come to focus. Also, what timeout does or pausing, it reduces levels of stress. That's really important. Also, what, what it does, um, if we um, take time out, we pause, it helps us to work better and to maintain interest. One of the things that happen with lots of work or for anything we do, if we're at it all the time, there comes a point where it's boring and it gets too much. But stepping back gives us some space just to um, uh, look at things. Good evening, uh, uh, Naruka. Really good to see you this evening. Uh, maybe the first time you actually had in a comment on live. So thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, you see, do something different. Push the boat out. Step outside your comfort zone. Blessings. So, and also, um, pausing, believe, listen to this, pausing can also reduce in, uh, risks of injury. Can you believe it? Due to fatigue. So taking time out, um, can be really important to reducing injuries. Um, I remember listening to a, a YouTube um, podcast by Dr. 
Chatterjee, Ranjan Chatterjee, and was talking about, yes, avoiding burnout. Um, he, uh, he was talking about sleep. And one of the one of the interviewees said he realizes that one of the reasons why he got injured so often, keep fit, he wasn't getting enough sleep. He said the time that he started to get more sleep, his body was able to recover and he got injured less. And so this whole thing about pausing, sleep is a form of pause, really important. So as we consider pausing, I just wanted to consider a few things which are happening right now. There is something called, some of you may not even know, some of you may do, something called the slow movement. It started off in 1986 by an Italian guy when McDonald's opened their first branch in Rome and he kicked off alarming because uh, it's about fast food and, you know, Italians and Germans and French, when they have food, it's slow, it's relaxed, it's enjoyed, they savor the food. And in 1986, the first McDonald's uh, was launched in Rome and he kicked off, the name is Carlo Petrini, Carlo Petrini kicked off alarming, caused a protest to the first McDonald's, and then st there started a movement called the slow movement. And the idea of the slow movement is this idea that not just because it's faster and quicker doesn't mean to say it's better. <clears throat> so what they're really advocating, slowing down so we do things better, do things thoroughly, and people enjoy their work far more. So if you look it up, um, the slow movement. In fact, I'm just jumping ahead of myself a little bit. Go on YouTube, put in slow movement. There's loads of stuff on the slow movement. It's not going at snail's place, but there's a resistance to this fast pace of life because people realize that it's not benefiting us. Um, certainly in um, America, uh, and I guess it's no different here, perhaps they're doing more research in America, people that are living the fast pace of life, the amount of autoimmune um, 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 illnesses that they're getting, the increased rate of um, lots of other things, and partly due to the levels of stress that people are under and the fast pace of life that we're all under. So the slow movement, a cultural revolution, it is called against the idea that faster is better, taking time to do things properly. So here are just some things that we can do to take pausing. And uh, remember, I don't have time to go into it this evening, but in our bodies, there's something like, I think it's 12 or 13 different systems. And if we keep running at a fast rate, every system in our body is affected. And the body that was designed, created, evolved, however, whatever word you want to use, was created to work in harmony. When we don't take uh, the time, the pause, to step back, that's when we get all manner of illnesses and uh, disease and so forth. So uh, there's, there's a uh, old outfit called the slow art or the slow art day. And this whole thing about aging, uh, there's stuff around the slow movement with cinema and also about consumption, that there's a, a consciousness that actually we're consuming too much. And certainly global warming, climate change is kind of letting us know we haven't looked after the earth as well as we could do. And in my books, the earth, uh, in my books, the earth is saying to you, right, uh, you've, you've, you've ignored the signs and symptoms. Now let us really let you know what we think uh, of, of how you've treated us over the decades and centuries. So this whole thing about uh, about consumption. How can we manage this earth in a way that it's sustainable? And people are talking about it now. There's also uh, something called slow counseling. It's not that people talk in a slow motion, but what some people have done, they're so stressed out with their work at such a fast pace they go to see the counselor to help them re-look at what they might be doing in their lives. So this whole thing about slow counselling, how can the counsellor help the person to slow down? Now, it might actually mean that for some people, you can't continue in that industry because there is no room for your well-being. Uh, there's a friend of mine, uh, sorry, not a friend of mine, somebody I know, um, just about to start a new job. He was offered two jobs. One was five grand more but he took the lesser paid job because he said that the first time he was in an interview 
and the interviewers told him, we take the well-being of our employees seriously. We don't believe in our employees being overstressed. So this is some of the things that we do. So, um, so, he, so he went for the job with the lesser amount of money because there was, a, a con there was an intentional effort by management to ensure that people uh, were looked after properly. So please, if you've got any comments, you've got any thoughts, uh, please um, uh, put it in the chat box and I respond and uh, as best as I can. Also, just to say, I'll announce it now and I'll announce it, announce it at the end. On Tuesday, the 4th of July, I'll make, make sure it's notes and all the rest of it. Tuesday, the 4th of July is an open evening. So I'm not going to have any material uh, planned. So what you can do, if you have any questions about any matter whatsoever, you can email me or you can message me during the week and I will respond to it when we have the live uh, program. So that's Tuesday, the 4th of July at 7 o'clock. It's an open evening, so I'm not going to come with any material. So if you want to, please e uh, DM me, as they call it, e email me, um, and then I'll be able to... Um, all, the, all the requests will be anonymous. I shan't say who said what or who asked what. Um, so it'll give me an opportunity just to have an open evening, open mic, and any issues that you have, please feel that you can bring them Tuesday, the 4th of July at 7 o'clock. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a real challenge for me. Okay, let's press on then. So this whole, this whole thing about education, slow movement, they've even incorporated slow movement in education. There's something called Lectio, reading, slow reading. I might have mentioned it. Now, Lectio Divina um, comes from a Christian tradition where it's a way of actually understanding the Bible. There's a kind of process and reading the Bible really slowly. But the principle is really, really important. So let me give an example. I, don't, I know I've shared it somewhere, but I can't remember where. When I was um, uh, graduating, oh gosh, 10 years ago now, nearly 10 years ago, I sat next to a guy. He was a chaplain at, I think it was Broadmarsh Prison. And uh, we asked each other what our, our thesis was on. So I asked him about his. And... Um, I can't remember the name of the woman, but he said at 19, he was given this book, 19 years old, he was given this book. He said, Delroy, I tried to read it, couldn't make the head or tail of it, and periodically tried to read this book. And it must have been from the age of 19, in his 20s, in his 30s, he tried to read it. It was boring. And I think he was in his 40s, I think, early 40s. He, he said to himself, this book, he said, this book has traveled with me over the last 20 years, Oh, good evening, Jerry. Good to see you this evening. And yes, for anyone that's watching uh, live, anyone that's watching later on, or you're watching in a different part of the world, uh, welcome. And um, yeah, welcome. I hope you're getting uh, something from, from this. So um, he said that he was given this book at 19 in his 40s after making many attempts to read it. He said to himself, right, after 20 years, this book has traveled with me. And I'm going to find out what this book mean, mean, means. So what he did, he read one sentence and he said, Delroy, I would only go on to the next sentence if I understood the previous sentence. He said it took me nine months to read the book. But he said at the end of the book, he said he realized this woman had something to say. And his PhD thesis was based on the work and associated uh, areas of, um, I think it was some form of theology, I think. So this whole thing about slow reading. Now, not every book is, is like that, but there are some books, those of you that are readers, there are some books you can't, as my friend says, you can't read it and watch TV. You've got to give it your time. And I'm reading um, a book at the minute and I've, I'm using a method, I've read it through once, and now I'm reading a method, uh, using a method to go through the book slowly, to make lots of notes so I retain it a lot more. So this whole thing about this slow movement, find out about it. Just Google it, slow movement, um, and it will give you loads of information. We're looking at taking time to pause, the importance of pausing, not just for in terms of physical but emotional, psychological, our entire being, really important to pause. Uh, there's something called um, The Thinking Environment by Nancy Klein. She says um, she's a coach. But one of the things that she doesn't come to co coaches with models, she says this, the reason why people make poor decisions is not they're not given the time to think. They're not given the space. And she's not a cheap coach, she's not a, but she has amazing results. So she says, she, she explains to individuals, she said, um, 
In fact, one of her latest book is called I Promise I Won't Interrupt. That's what the book is called. So she said the reason why people don't uh, make good decisions, they're not given the time to space to think through what needs to be done. So she'll start the session by saying, okay, what would you like to think, feel, or say? And she said, I would only interrupt you when you have run out of things to say. So somebody can be talking for 10, 15, 20 minutes. She doesn't jump in with the pauses. She allows them to talk. And if they get stuck, she then says, um, what, would you, what more would you like to think, say, or feel? And what that is doing, that's giving the person the time to work through what they're thinking. Because quite often we're in such a rush we don't get we don't get the time to think through what we are thinking. So she creates that space, um, uh, and it works very very well. I've used it in couples work, where I've had sessions where <laughs> couples come in and they start talking. Um, what well, is an argument that's going and they're hammering? That was it. Uh, throwing stuff at each. Not 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 literally of course, but and you start, some say, "Whoa, hang on a minute. Listen, listen. This is what we're going to do." And I remember one particular couple when I tried it, I said, right, you start first, three minutes, and no interruption from me or your part or your spouse. And sometimes you can see the spouse itching, wanting to say something. I said, no, no, three minutes. And then after that, it's then your time. And uh, then it's your three minutes. And the whole session will carry on like that. I might say very, very little. And it's amazing if they stick to it. One couple said to me, you know, Daryl, we even use it at home now in our conversations. So this whole thing, she calls it the thinking environment, the whole thing about pausing, giving yourself time to think um, is really important. So how can we practice this pause in business? I know that I do it quite a lot. I hear some questions. I remember being in a meeting a few years ago, and this person asked me a question. And I remember thinking, I know your game, mate. And I said, to, I said to him, maybe I shouldn't have said it. I said to him, um, I will answer your question. Though that's a leading question, but I will answer it. And I was very, very careful what I said to uh, to uh, to him. So one of the things about practicing pausing is that sometimes when people ask you questions, they're trying to catch you out. And sometimes they ask tricky questions. And sometimes what we can do, we can jump in. And I'd be saying to you, learn how to pause. Just take a step back. Even say to them, it's an excellent question. Can you give me a moment to think about it? And people really, normally, they respect that. So what you're doing, you're just gaining some space to offer a thought. Um, so there's a little um, anagram, is it called? Stop, S-T-O-P, S-T-O-P. Uh, S means to stop. Remember to pause. That's really important. So somebody, your manager, your leader, or somebody asks you a tricky question, first thing you do, remember, you stop. You remember to pause. T is take a few deep breaths. So what you're doing, you're slowing things down, slowing down the heart rate, slowing down your blood pressure, slowing the breathing down. Why? So you can think clearly. You can think with clarity. Your thinking is not rushed. The body slowed down so you can function really, really well. So T, take a few depth, uh, breaths. O is observe your present state. The person's asked the question, are you getting quite angry? It's about being conscious of feeling angry or irritated or agitated. And if that is the case, then you have to be really careful how you respond. So your response then is measured and, and so forth. Incredibly um, important. So stop, uh, stop, pause, to, uh, remember to pause. T, take a few deep breaths. And O is to observe your feeling, observe what's going on as this person is asking this question or this situation, and proceed with awareness. So you've stopped, you take, you've stopped, you remember to pause, you're taking a few deep breaths, you're aware of what's happening, so you now proceed with awareness. You're conscious of what's taking place, and you're more likely not to make a rash decision. Now, that's really important, and what you can, if you learn to do it, it becomes a kind of part of how you kind of operate and function with people. So please, anybody wants to add a comment, please do. I'm more than happy to uh, field a comment or an observation. It's really good. So the next time you're in a situation of a conversation with an individual or it's getting kind of tense and they, they might throw something at you, not literally, of course, or they might say something which is quite barbed, use that stop. Ah, oh, good evening, Dawn. Good to see you uh, this evening. So use that, 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 
that period of time, that pause to, to stop, remember to pause, take a few deep breaths. And I don't mean breath like, <gasps> take it through your nose slowly, but it's deep. You're slowing everything down. Observe how, you have, observe how you're feeling and then proceed with all that you've done and you answer them accordingly. Now, we're going to finish in a couple of minutes, but there's an excellent book um, for managers and leaders. And even if you're not a manager or a leader, it's a superb book called The Pause Principle by Kevin Cashman. Uh, I've read it once. I need to go through it again. Uh, fantastic book. I've got lots of exercise in it and lots of questions that he poses. So uh, the book is called The Pause Principle, Step Back to Lean Forward. And Kevin Cashman argues very strongly in the book, in this world of busyness and this fr frenetic pace, leaders are not meant to act quickly, but to pause deeply. Sometime when I listen to the politicians and some of the, some of the policies that they're producing and the way forward, I know straight away, I think, and I'm making an assumption here, some of those things haven't been thought through well. You, I just get a sense that there's not been much reflection. There's been lots of talk, but there's very little kind of just stepping back and just seeing what the consequences might be of some of the situation that might be going on. I could, I could be wrong, and I stand corrected, but I, I just get a sense that quite often there's not much reflection that actually goes on in some of the things that have been uh, done. So the pause principle for those of you that are readers, um, or, or in fact, if you've got a manager, a leader who, who listens well and perhaps is a bit of a reader, um, buy it for them as a gift or, or let them know about this particular book. It's really, really good. Good evening, Joan. My goodness me, a blast from the past. Uh, really good to see you this evening. Uh, thank you um, for um, uh, being on this evening. So... Another thing that we can do, uh, I think if you've been with me long enough, you know that I love quotes. Quotes are fantastic. And if you can find a quote that really speaks to you, I would say use it. So here's something that Robin Poynton said. Now, po Robin Poynton is the author of a book called Do Pause. If you type his name, Poynton is P-O-Y-N-T-O-N. -O and he's written a book called Do Pause pause and it says you are not your to-do list this whole thing about pausing this is what he says pausing is part of living and breathing it allows us space to notice new possibilities question existing ways of acting or simply appreciate life i think it's really, so that's a quote that's a quote pausing is part of living and breathing it allows us space to notice new possibilities Question existing ways of acting or simply appreciate life. That is a quote that if it speaks to you, pen and paper, write it out, really unpack it, and then put it together in a way that is meaningful to you. Then you ask the question, how can this quote become a reality in my life? And then you may spend the next month, two months, three months, living out this whole thing about pa pa um, pausing and what happens over a period of time it becomes a lifestyle so then pausing becomes a way of being a way of just functioning uh, for you so um quotes are really important there's a woman called um uh, courtney carver and she's written some stuff around uh places to pause and there's some interesting um ideas she's got but one i took out from her no in fact i took, took, took two or three actually but one she said is this she calls it the pause pre-purchase i think it's absolutely fantastic listen to this yeah taking uh, narika uh, says oh that's a look yeah uh, taking time to do something uh yeah diverting absolutely sometimes sometimes we're under pressure we're under the cosh and we may have deadlines, but sometimes just taking a few moments away from this kind of um, kind of on it can really help us to think through things. How many times have we, those of you that are our essays or that, those of you might be thinking about um, a business and so forth, idea comes when you're far away from it. Uh, that's why it's really good to always walk with a notebook. So because sometimes we get really good ideas and it's good to write them down. Um, um, and then you can go back to it later on. I believe it was Richard Branson. Um, he had the idea of a train company 10 years before he did it. He kept a notebook, ideas that he got, and then one day, 
went back to the notebook and then developed the idea. So it's really important. So um, Courtney Carver calls this about pausing. She calls it pause pre-purchase. Pause pre-purchase. This is what she says you do. She said, do it for 30 days. Go to town, shopping. If there's anything you feel like buying, you don't buy it with paper or plastic, but you write it down on a list. So you feel to buy something. Now, I'm not talking about necessity, but we do get urges, we get impulses. She says, do that from every time we go out and we feel to buy something. We don't literally buy it, but we write it down on a list. And at the end of the month, she says, tot up how much money you would have spent had you responded to the impulses. So that's another form of pausing. Pause pre-purchase. I think it's a fantastic way. Do you know what? I think I'm going to give it a go as well. Um, because I know that men can be – I'm not – I don't buy impulsively big things, but men can be impulsive. I know that sometimes I can be as well. I'm, I'm certainly a lot better uh, at it now. But pause pre-purchase i think it's a fantastic idea the other thing that she suggests is something that i do um best ideas come when you're thinking of them yeah and sometimes best ideas come when you're not thinking of them as well they just kind of pop out um for and for, for for me for example if i'm having a shower sometimes i get some fantastic ideas something that i wasn't thinking about when i went to the shower and this idea just pops up uh, there's some there's some um there's some interesting stuff around people getting ideas around water um, and I know that um, certainly running water and so forth is really good. Same principle. Ayo, Olivia is saying something here. Oh, I love this. Same principle for online shopping. Put it in the shopping basket and leave it there. Yeah, you know what? Um, I put a book in the, the shopping basket. Must be 18 months ago. It's still there. Never bought it. Don't need it. Uh, but it's 43 quid and somebody might be saying oh yeah the reason why i bought you you're tight well actually <laughs> well i've not bought it it's still in the it's still in the basket so yeah this whole thing about pause pre-purchase i think it's a fantastic idea uh one of the things that she also suggested is something i do every single day she said when you wake up pause before you get out of bed just pause before you get out of bed and i think i said a couple of weeks ago uh, within the jewish tradition um, and this is for anybody, whether you you have faith, you don't have faith, you don't believe in the existence of deity and so forth. Before you get out the bed, first breath, you give thanks. You just give thanks. And there's lots of things to give thanks for. You don't have to be thank, uh, thanking a, a deity. This whole thing around gratitude, just giving thanks, pausing before you get out the day. And um, also the other thing she talks about, which I think is really important, Pause when you've been hurt. And what happens sometimes when arguments escalate, we've been hurt and then we and we retaliate with our words and we say something back and then things escalate. She says, pause when you hurt, pause when you received a criticism. It can, I know that it can help a lot in, in relationships if you just pause. And sometimes just asking somebody, why did you say that? Just either get them just helping them to kind of explain what was taking place so this whole thing about pause when you're hurt is really important she talks about pausing uh, uh here we go yeah i've got a few things in the shopping basket for some time still don't need them absolutely and, and and can you imagine we would have spent loads of money so this pause pre-purchase if you try it over the next week or two weeks or the month, let me know how you get on that's really important well, i'm going to finish in a couple of minutes and she also talks about pausing during a meal i'd even say pausing do your course not like restaurants you know they you know you finish one and before it's even gone down properly onto the next course and they want to get you out because they want people in as quickly as possible um having meals together i i suspect what's going to happen as if things do continue to increase in price people are going to have more meals at home and, and they're going to invite the friends and then you, you will then enjoy the food, enjoy the company because you're taking time to pause. You're not under pressure to eat quickly, and get out of the restaurant as quickly as possible. Here's my final comment. Uh, before the final comment, Tuesday, the 4th of July, uh, put it in your uh, diaries. Uh, that night's an open night. So come with your questions. Obviously, we can't talk, but you can put them in your either LinkedIn or Facebook. I think on YouTube as well. Um, also, um, uh, please DM me on Messenger 
or on Facebook, or you've got my email address there, please email me and I, I'll, I'll make sure that I respect people's privacy. But if there's a question, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what the question is, um, please let me know. So that's Tuesday, the 4th of July. It will be kind of open mic, so to speak. So I'm not going to come with a script. Um, not going to come with anything prepared, but please come. So the only thing I'll be maybe responding to, will be responding to is people's questions on the night. And if people uh, contact me beforehand, um, that, that's something I'll bring, but there'll be no set lesson. So the final comment in terms of pausing, we've spent a lot of time looking at pausing. And I'm going to finish with this. This is my own my own quote as well. Um, well, what's it now? Um, a rested body and brain is far more productive than a tired, worn out, worn out body and brain. A rested body and brain is far more productive than a tired, worn out body and brain. So that is my contribution for taking time to pause, part four. Uh, if, if anybody wants to add a final comment, please do. I uh, hope you got something from the session. Uh, look at it again if you found it helpful. Please feel to share with other people. If there's no other comments for this evening, um, take something away. Hopefully you've taken something away uh, this evening. We looked at some creative ways. We looked at stop. Remember, stop. Um, remember to pause. T, take a few breaths um, to slow things down. O, to observe uh, what's going on in your body at the time, how you're feeling. And P, proceed with awareness. So before sometimes people ask us questions, it catches off guard and we make a response. And sometimes the response can be way off because we've not thought about um, our response. We've just kind of reacted. Um, so that's, that's something to kind of remember, stop, but also uh, using quotes and also pause pre-purchase. Really, really important. So listen, enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the rest of your week. And we're back here next Tuesday at 7 o'clock to look at a new topic. Um, yeah, whatever it might be, I'll, I'll certainly let you know as you'll get on, on the feed. But yeah, Tuesday, the 4th of July at 7 o'clock, open evening. Please um, come with uh, questions. And if I don't know, you know what? I don't know. But one thing that I will do, I'll say this. Do you know what? I do a bit of research. And certainly if it's live and I say, I won't blag you. I say, look, let's do a bit of research. And then the following week, I'll come with the research I found and I'll share that with you. So wishing you all the best for the evening. Thank you very much indeed um, for this evening. Oh, Juliet, oh, good to see you this evening. Um, yeah, thank you, for the, thank you for the emoji as well. Really appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, enjoy the rest of the evening and your week. And I uh, hope you've got something from these um, uh, series of pausing. Really important. Listen, you can avoid crisis by taking a pause. And if the pause means going to the doctor and getting um, and getting some time off on the sick, that's pausing. You don't have to hit a crisis, which could take you weeks and months to recover when two weeks on the sick could actually prevent a lot of stuff. So thank you very much indeed. Take care of yourself and speak to you soon. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.